this all the way up. How about that? Test, test, test. Good. ASMR. All right. Who's got a who's got a Vesper? I'm seeing rip. What does that mean? What's up with the RIP? What does that mean? You cut yourself. Oh no, I did cut myself. That's true. I'm I'm going to die. I'm very happy to spend my last few moments with you guys. I appreciate it. Um, what's up with the daddy stuff? You can call me daddy all you want, but what does it mean? Anyway, <laughs> chat. Cheers, guys. Here's here's the first. The first live stream, let's get cooking, okay? Let's get down to basics, right? That's what this is all about. So, I'm going to grab my induction cooktop. This is the good old Induxpert here. You guys probably recognize this from the show. Get it nice and centered here. There we go. So many people are calling me daddy. It's creepy. All right. <laughs> now... You can take the sauce pot or Dutch oven of your choice. I'm going to use a Lake Rose. There we go. This is my Lake Rose here. Let me check focus. We're shooting in a shallow depth of field today, ladies and gentlemen. Got to check focus. There it is, right there. Beautiful. Call me daddy all you want. I don't care. It's fine. I just want to know what it means. <laughs> Okay, now to start, if you guys are cooking along, we're going to start with a little bit of light olive oil. We're saving the extra virgin stuff for later. We want to start with light because sauteing, that can smoke it out. We don't want that. Wow, good start, good start. Um, and we need to chop up our vegetables. We need some garlic and we need some onion. So I hope you guys went and got yourselves a gigantic fuck off cutting board. I really hope so. I'm gonna angle the camera down a little bit so we can see a little bit better. What are they, what are they saying over there, Jess? <laughs> What's being said? So I can't. I can't keep track of this. It's going real fast. All right. Cool. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna grab my, my chef's knife. This is my favorite. You guys saw it in the basics episode. This is the Vustoff icon. I'm not sponsored by Vustoff. I just, I just love what they do. I'm a big fan. So um, let's start with uh, the onion, just because we want to sort of, you know, mise en place, everybody. That's, that's something very important in cooking, is mise en place. That is French for everything in its place, I think. I think that's what it's French for. Jess, is that what it's French for? <laughs> <laughs> I need fact checking over here. I can't be a moderator and a fact checker. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> What am I paying you for? <laughs> All right, so guys, we're gonna peel our Spanish onion here. A yellow onion, I guess, because we're using it to make Italian food. Why would it be a Spanish onion? Everything in its place. Thank you. That's what I said, right? Yeah. Then I was right. <laughs> I was right. No slow mode. What does that mean? Can you find that gear button? Turn it on. <laughs> I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> what the hell is slow mode? Guys, I'm sorry. This is new. This is all very new. You have to, you have to, you know, growing pains here. So, you guys get some, some practice in with cutting here. The, the, you know, making salsa, making, making tomato sauce. These are excellent opportunities to practice slicing, dicing. So, we just put lateral cuts down the onion and we put a, cr a cut across the center of the onion like that and now we're just going to cut through like that. See? And I don't mind an oniony sauce. What? Slow mode makes it where everyone can limit it in time. I don't want to slow down the chat. I like the speed. Yeah, I kind of like the speed of the chat. I don't mind the speed of the chat. But it sounds like they do, so that's actually more important than what I like, I think. Oh, I'm starting to cry. Oh, I'm one of those, those... Somebody said that this stream would end in tears. They were right. They foresaw my, my onion sensitivities. All right, so anybody practicing at home, I hope that you're getting a little bit of knife, 
Knife practice in. Okay. There we go. Next time, next stream, we're gonna have a, a an overhead looking down cam that you can you can switch between. What is up with the, with the crying? <laughs> Guys, relax you know, with the crying. <laughs> what did I say about the scrunching? So you get to see all the things you'd never see otherwise on the show, which is me like bending down to pick things up, throwing things away. <laughs> Pretty cool. Oh, it's because I cried from the. Uh, the onions, that's why. That's really sweet of you guys. Thank you for crying with me. Holy Jesus. <laughs> um, Amelia, Amelia over at Made In Network, if you're watching right now, can you look into this slow mo thing and see what the hell they're talking about? <laughs> and if it's something we want to do right now? Amelia is, the, is my, 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 the, my people, person who's watching this right now, making sure that. Things don't go off the rails, which they are, <laughs> I think. Can't really tell. All right, guys, so chopped up our onion. Let's get some garlic going, huh? The thing about garlic is that it's really garlicky, am I right? Crush the clove. And we're going to use three cloves for red sauce, three cloves. Stop crying, for Christ's sake. Oh, all right. Whoever this guy is who's copy-pasting Daddy Cry, <laughs> block this motherfucker. <laughs> Not you, Jess. Amelia, somebody. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Turn on slow mode. Seriously, the, uh, whatever the slow mode is, it sounds like something we need. Well, a lot of people don't want it. A lot of people don't want it. Yeah. Well, is there is there like a poll we can do? Is there is the, can we make this into a democracy of some kind? <laughs> I'm gonna um, whip out my. Uh, uh oh. Where it is. Shoot. Never mind. It sounded suggestive at first, but I was going to whip out my, my garlic peeler, but I don't know where it's at, and you guys probably don't have one of those, so let's do it the old-fashioned way. I'm going to go ahead and smash down some cloves here. Oh, God. <laughs> Internet's gross. When did you guys get, get so gross? <laughs> smash down three cloves of garlic. Focus. I'm focusing, don't worry. Yeah, they weren't kidding. I need I need a moderator in here to like make sure there aren't monsters. Oh man, that sounds pretty good. What what the hell is that? Yeah, turn it on. Can you do that? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Ooh, ooh. It looks slower already, or maybe, yeah. or maybe it doesn't. <laughs> some people like it, some people don't. I don't know who to believe. Which side of history should I be on? All right, guys, we're dicing some garlic here. Finally mincing, rather. And, uh, you know... We can use a garlic crusher, but this is a good opportunity to, to you know, learn how to mince something very fine. And that's an important knife skill. So it's almost the same principle as uh, mincing the onion, which is that we're just going to place some lateral slices down the length of the onion. If you want to see what I'm doing here. I'm going to try to cheat out to the camera as often as I can. Placing slices down that way, and then rocking the knife through. See, there's a sort of locomotive motion to the knife. And with each cut, I just move a little bit further down. You don't move the food, you move the knife. It is the lesson, if I remember correctly, I was taught. But of course, if you don't feel like doing this, you can grab your friendly neighborhood garlic crusher. 
throw your clubs in there and just whoink. that's that. Using the back of the knife, specifically back of the knife, scrape it out. And then just for my pieces to sort of even them, even them out, we're going to just sort of run the knife through them like this. This is a shaky table. I don't know if you guys can see this, but shaky table. Oh, the comments look like they've slowed way down. Yeah, this is way better. I like it. I like it. All right, great. Let's get rid of those goddamn spanners. Uh, no, I, I, do, I, I, I peel the garlic before putting it in the crusher because, like, it's such a pain in the ass to put unpeeled cloves in here. Like, it takes forever to clean them out. Um, okay, guys, so I think we're ready to go ahead and start sautéing things. Am I right? Somebody consult the recipe, am I right? <laughs> I'm going to look at the recipe and make sure I'm not missing something here. Yeah, now we're ready to go. Okay. I'm going to put this back here. Out the damn way. There we go. And bring back my... There we go. So I see what I'm doing. I've got to make sure everything's perfectly centered. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but this is kind of an aesthetic show. And I like to make sure that things are centered and vibing good. And get back to the comments. Oh, the spammers are back. That didn't take long. How <laughs> do you prevent that? I don't know what to do. Okay. So I'm putting this over medium heat. Thirty or sixty seconds. Two minutes slow mode. Oh, oh. must have followed for thirty minutes. I think 30 minutes seems, seems fair. This is an, an Induxburg 1800. You can get this on Amazon for about 45 bucks to answer your question. A hot dog is not a sandwich, it's a hot dog. Newbie Babish? Is that me? <laughs> Who's that? Is that Jess? Yeah, she's cute. My sink just exploded. I wish you guys could have seen that. That was wild. All right, so we got our light olive oil heating up here. Obviously, don't want it smoking. I just want it shimmering. I just want it going just enough. Make sure my stuff is all ready. There we go. Smoking. Tell a joke. Okay, I'll tell you a joke. <clears throat> I went to the uh, temporary tattoo parlor the other day to get a temporary tattoo. And when it wouldn't wash off, I went back to the temporary tattoo parlor to complain, but it was gone. That's my joke. Enjoy. Jess didn't get it because I didn't hear any laughing over there. <laughs> oh, guys, relax, relax. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Garlic's, garlic's getting a little hot, so I'm going to start getting. I mean, the oil is getting a little hot, not the garlic. You want to get the garlic hot by putting it into the hot oil. So there's a chemistry lesson to be learned here. There we go. And uh, grab a nice wooden grandma spoon. There we go. And we just want to barely get this fragrant, like you do not want burnt garlic. Nothing worse in the world than burnt garlic. So we're just getting this a little fragrant, keeping it moving. Keeping the heat not too high. Don't want anything to start turning brown or anything like that. Before it even gets the chance, we're getting the onions in there. There we go. Yeah, it must be different to have binging with Babbage with sound, am I right? All the all the food noises. So this is basic for Babbage, not binging. There we go. Yeah, there's recipe lists. Everybody who's curious, there's recipe lists, uh, the, the ingredients list and the shopping list for, for ingredients and for equipment. 
on the website at basicswithdavish.com. Go check it out for next time if you want to play along, okay? Yeah, I spoon the hell out of the Dutch oven. It's very loud. It's a little getting used to. There we go. Start a drinking show if you insist. Make sure you got your tools ready. Make sure you got everything you need to cook. Are you listening, guys? I'm going to speak directly into the mic now. <laughs> so, make sure, make sure you've got your tools. All right. I'm right now. I'm drinking Glenfiddich 15. I just got this guy for tonight, it's a special occasion. We're having a little Glenfiddich 15. I have this over medium heat. Again, we're not trying to brown anything. We're trying to sweat the onions. Sweating means you can see that. Uh, maybe you can't see, but they're starting to turn a little translucent. Moisture is coming out of them, but they're not browning. That is sweating. Okay? And uh, so, just in preparation, I'm also going to start opening my cans of DOP tomatoes. There we go. Let's hit the mic a little bit. Sorry. Hope you guys can't hear that. We got some DOP tomatoes here. That's apparently important. It means uh, um, it means it's super duper. No, I'm kidding. It means that these are certified actual San Marzano tomatoes. These tomatoes are from San Marzano, Italy. Certified. You cannot deny it. I'm gonna open these up just in preparation. And once once the onions are starting to get really translucent, oh my god, it smells so good. I can't even explain to you guys. Just onions and garlic. A little bit of olive oil is nuts. Alright, this guy has a little dent in it right here. That's why I'm turning him upside down. Take a look at some comments here. Anyone with a purple check mark is a certified affiliate with Twitch streamers. They have some advice for you. Mm -hmm. Black Wrench is a Twitch staff member. Okay, that's very good to know. Thank you, see you, the kangaroo rat. Thank you very much. Okay. There we go. Yeah, we need smell o vision next. That's what's that's what's coming next technologically in the world of, of streamers. Okay. Turbo users. I'm a turbo u no I'm not. I will be, you know. Because it's kind of my, my skis now. Alright, so these guys are starting to soften up. They're really glistening with all the moisture that's coming out of the onions. So now, to add a little bit of slow simmered flavor, we're going to add tomato paste. Now, there we go, tomato paste, which uh, uh, tomato paste is basically just tomatoes that have been simmered down until all the sugars have broken down. They're really sweet, they're really they're roasty and delicious. And adding a bunch of this is going to help make our sauce taste like it's been simmered for hours upon hours. I'm going to add maybe three tablespoons worth. Just like that. Okay. And mix that in. We want to toast that a little bit. We want to get that get some of those roasty flavors going. Oh my goodness, that smells good. I should fix the black, black box. Oh, come on, it's the oh the black box, you're absolutely right. How do I do that? Why is that there? I'm sorry, we'll fix that next time. I don't know how to fix that right now. There is a black box around the video. I don't know why. I'll get my people on that. <laughs> is there? What's the difference? No, no, I'm not asking you. <laughs> no, I pretty. I, th th this seems like a good system. Tell me any any interesting comments that uh, that bring up some good conversation. What what is the difference? Whoever said that there's a difference between canned and tube tomato paste? What is the difference? Why should I care? Hang on. That's the laundry guy. Yeah. He's early. He's supposed to be here between 9 and 10. Unless that's not the laundry guy. Unless we got a, got a mystery person coming up here. Alright. 
That's looking and smelling good. So I'm going to add our tomatoes. Et voila. Well, beautiful. It's very hard not to watch myself on the delayed stream. It's very, very surreal. <laughs> like I'm seeing myself doing things in the past, and I get caught up in it. And I'm like, oh no, I'm I'm actually I'm performing right now. I should I should you know do and say things. Uh, so we're gonna we have whole San Marzano tomatoes in here. We need to crush them up because I want a nice chunky marinara sauce. So I'm crushing these against the side of the pots, like so. Hang on. Folks. <laughs> it's not ready to taste. If this were ready to taste, I would totally have had him in, come in here and taste the food. But it's not ready. He would just have been eating some raw tomatoes, and that's not even nice. That's mean. Or a prank to play on somebody. Can I skip any steps here, guys? No, no, we're good. I got some sauce on the, on the screen. Play that much. Sorry? They love the laundry guy. <laughs> the laundry guy. We'll get him back. Big ups to the. <laughs> He's going to become a, an official part of the Binging with Babbage canon. Laundry guy. Kind of like kind of like the mailman from uh, 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 the Mrs. Doubtfire show when the mailman would show up. Or no, I'm sorry. What? No, it was the, um, uh, Mr. Rogers had the mailman, right? And Blue's Clues had mail time. And Pee Wee's Playhouse had a whole, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and he's gonna be, he's gonna be like that. He's gonna roll in and be like, "Laundry guy's here." What's your induction temperature? Right now I'm at a thousand watts, which is we were at we, we before this. This is an eighteen hundred watt cooker, so thousand watts. Now I'm at twelve hundred. It's sort of like medium high, and. Before we were down at 600, 800 because we wanted medium low. We didn't want to brown anything. We just wanted to sweat everything. That's what we're after. So I'm going to bring this to a gentle simmer. And once I do, I'm going to throw in a, a sprig of basil. And we're going to put it on the back burner back here. And on the stove that I never get to use on the normal show, which I'm, I'm ecstatic to be able to finally use. Uh, and we're going to let it simmer for at least an hour. At least. Ideally two hours and it's going to be about 830 by that time Which means that for this live stream because we're going from 8 to 10 We're gonna have about an hour and a half to let this simmer Which is, pretty, which is okay Got a lot of tomato paste in there that's gonna help, you know, create some sort of slow faux slow cooked favors flavors Stainless steel and this so, okay, so so this is cast iron that's been enameled which means that uh Stainless steel is, is very good for when you want foods to stick. It's great for searing. It's great for creating crusts. And uh, uh, cast iron is great for slow simmering and for any application where you need even, well-conducted, distributed heat. But ca raw cast iron with, with uh, tomatoes, raw cast iron is a uh, reactive metal, which means that it's going to leach a tinny taste you're literally going to have a metallic taste in your sauce because of the cast iron. You don't want to use aluminum either. Aluminum is another reactive metal. And when it's been enameled like this, not only does this look like the kind of pot that something that your grandmother would make sauce in, but also it's protected from that reactive metal. So that's why we're using this. You can use a stainless steel uh, pot for this, no problem. It'll work just fine. But just because I got this guy in the house, I'm going to use him. I recognize. You weren't expecting this to be so educational? It's the whole point, Professor Frankly. Frankly, it's the whole point. Where do I shop? I shop on Amazon, a little, a little mom and pop shop called Amazon.com. <laughs> also, in New York City, there's a great store called Whisk. They have a location in Brooklyn. They have a location in Manhattan. A lot of great stuff. 
Um, I shop at NY Cake, which is a baking supply store. They have every imaginable flavor of sprinkle and color of frosting. You can't even imagine. And uh, 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 for groceries, I, I mean, they just opened a Whole Foods two blocks away here in Harlem on 125th Street. It's amazing. I shouldn't have just told you that because now you know in a four block radius where I live. That was a mistake. And we'll just pretend that didn't happen. I was making that up. I'm talking about my friend's house. <laughs> Jess, I'm really glad you're here. It feels like I have like, you know, kind of, kind of like a, like a, like an Andy Richter just laugh at my jokes. When I, Cause otherwise I'd have no feedback. Oh God, I just called you Andy Richter. It's the meanest thing I've ever said. Uh, 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 what's the name? What's the name of the guy from Letterman? Um, Paul, uh, what is his name? I can't remember. Anyway, we've got. <laughs> My job before the show was as a visual effects artist. I used to work on commercials that you'd probably see on Hulu. You'd also see them on Food Network. You'd see them on uh, uh, a, a lot of cleaning products, household products, cooking products. Uh, that was just what our that was just our niche. We just worked on those kinds of commercials, and um, I did little things like replace cell phone screens. Like anytime you see. You know, a cell phone screen in in a commercial, it's been digitally placed there because when you film them, they don't look right. So it was my job to put the cell phone screens in there. If an actor was accidentally wearing a Nike swoosh or something, I would get rid of that. Uh, one time an actor was really, really stoned. I was just telling this story. Uh, one time an actor was really, really stoned. I had to whiten up his eyes. Seriously. So they were red. Corporate shill. Get out of here. I, I hear somebody saying you should do a collaboration with You Suck at Cooking. I don't want to uh, give anything away, but wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Get excited, okay? Get excited, guys, if you like You Suck at Cooking. Okay, what about a good quality knife that's affordable? Good quality knife that's affordable. I got right here, folks. I got the Vlistoff Pro Series. We talked about this in Episode 1, Kitchen Essentials. This is $20.00. That is less money than the Victorinox Fibrox, the other most recommendable knife on the market. This guy's 20 bucks and it has this great handle that sort of helps train you where your where your hand is supposed to go. See how the handle's curved like that? That shows you exactly where your hand is supposed to go when you're operating the knife. This is, and it's also razor sharp and it's Vustoff. Like it's a good it's a good knife. This is a great budget knife. Check it out. Vustoff Pro. Thank you, Jess. Okay, we got this at a nice simmer now, so I'm gonna take it off the heat. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm sorry, I'm gonna take it off this heat and I'm gonna put it on the back burner. And we're getting rid of the induct spurt. Actually, no, we're not because we should do mac and cheese. And then while the mac and cheese is in the oven, we should do, um, we should do the salsa. So mac and cheese is next, guys. Let's do, let's make some bechamel, yeah. All right, so I have a medium saucepan here. <laughs> this is a trip, guys. This is a lot of fun. I'm happy we're doing this. So I've got a medium saucepan. You know, actually, before we do any of this, we should grate our cheese. We gotta, we gotta do mise en place, guys. Remind me to do mise en place. I'm gonna forget. Okay. So let's move this aside. And bring my, my my cutting board back. If you bought one of these cutting boards, really handy trick, okay? Unless you unless you cut meat on here, a really quick and easy way to uh, to sanitize it is with a mixture of um, diluted vinegar. This is probably about quarter part vinegar to three quarter parts water. And if you're just cutting vegetables, whatever, this is a great way to clean your board without having to put it in the sink. If you want to sanitize it after you've been cutting meat, if you want to totally sanitize it, pure vinegar. That'll take care of it. Otherwise, you know, look at that. I don't have to take this over the sink. I don't have to do anything. There we go. Now I'm going to grate some cheese. Here we go. Let's get my grater. Any further questions? Anything I'm missing? Just the usual. <laughs> Who's Clara? Mile 35. Who's Clara? Who are you talking about? I want to know. How do you keep your bechamel from getting great? I don't know, man. I make bechamel and it turns out right. Uh, we're going to make it later and you'll, <laughs> I guess we'll see if, my, if there's something different in my technique. 
Alright guys, so I know in uh, in the video I used um, I used Monterey Jack, but this time I'm going to use Gruyere because Gruyere has a lot more funk to it. It's really, really good. You know, it's, Monterey Jack is a very inoffensive, very not present cheese kind of. Cheddar's already filling that role, and the Gruyere is going to bring a lot more just like funky cheesiness, and that's what I want. You can totally use Monterey Jack; it's still going to make a delicious mac and cheese. But if you want to sort of you know kick it up a notch, try Gruyere. Um, I have Monterey Jack. If, if that's really a problem with you, get, with, with you guys, you let me know, and I'll use Monterey Jack instead. Just shout. <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and grate this stuff up. Oh dear. Oh, okay. So there's a few different ways to sharpen knives. First off, most people, most people think that this is a knife sharpener. This is not a knife sharpener. This is a honing steel. This is how you straighten out your edge after you've used it for so long that the edge on a, on, on, on a microscopic level becomes out of line. And what you need to do is you need to sharpen and you need to hone your knife. This is not a sharpener. This won't sharpen your knife. It will straighten your knife. That's it. To sharpen your knife, you need one of two things. You need a, a, a which I don't have right now, unfortunately, a, um, a, a top-down sharpener, which is just a handheld little V-shaped unit that you put your knife down, blade side up, and you, you run the sharpener down the length of the knife. Or, and again, I don't have this handy, I'm sorry, uh, a, a whetstone. Really the best way to sharpen your knife is with a whetstone. It takes a lot of practice. I can't even fully confident, confidently do it right, which is why I'm not going to do a tutorial on it just yet. Um, so, you know, go for, go for a whetstone if you, if you can, if you've got the balls. Go for it. All right, so I'm starting to grate cheese here. How what does, about Munster cheese? Too soft? Munster cheese is not too soft. It's just too mild. Munster cheese is like a is like a zesty mozzarella. Like it's barely there. Um, and I would, I again, totally fine. Same thing with Monterey Jack. Monterey Jack to me is a very, very mild cheese, and the cheddar's already doing that. The Gruyere is going to bring a different level of, of funk and cheesiness. It's going to... It, 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 it elicits the kind of macaroni and cheese that you're used to getting from like a restaurant. You know, something where you're like, oh my god, what did they put in this? It's Gruyere. So I'm sorry, I should have done that in basics, but... It's also not very basic. It's a little more advanced. If you want to, if you want to get into a little crazier cheeses... This is like the worst cheese grater in the world. I'm only halfway through this block right now. I might have to break out my like janky cheese grater from, from Ikea because it will at least do this faster. Yeah. Okay. I'm ready to be embarrassed. This is my cheese grater from Ikea. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to make much faster work of this cheese. It's going to grate it in a quarter of the time. We're live streaming here, so we gotta we got to be cognizant of time we all need to be cognizant of time you know we're all losing it every t every day it's just slipping through our fingers you know just what you think <laughs> do you ever eat instant ramen a pet egg yep it's the pet egg uh do i ever eat instant ramen you know yeah i do um if i'm super drunk and if it's late. I live in New York City. I should be able to get delivery food anytime, but sometimes you just don't want that deli sandwich. Sometimes you want something really hot in your face right now. And uh, that's when that's when that instant ramen comes in. I don't care. It's good. I don't care. Make fun of me all you want. It's good. What are they saying? Are they making fun of me? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't have a box grater. You're absolutely right. This is something I need to get. My favorite part when you're grating cheese is when you get down to this last little nub and you just be like, oh. Alright. They want to know about the Oliver Babish cinnamon. Is it enough? Oh. <laughs> so Oliver Babish <clears throat> was a character on like three episodes of The West Wing. Like, literally. It was, he was portrayed by Oliver Platt and I named my Reddit handle after him. Um... Because I like obscure character 
names. If anybody can name this character, you get the Babish Seal of Approval. My ideal character name that this <laughs> this this whole show might have been uh, named after, if not Babish, would have been Cam Winston from Frasier. If you can, if you know that character, congratulations! You're you're a very good person. And um, so it would have been cooking with Cam instead of binging with Babish, probably something like that. Oh, uh, my favorite junk food is by far, it's got to be Chicken McNuggets, man. Like, those are, those are, they're, they're killer. They're so good. Like, there's no denying how good a Chicken McNugget is. I don't care if it's made of the most processed, horrible things. I will eat them. All right, now we're doing some Parmesan here. We're just going to use it for both the sauce and the topping. There we go. I, I'm, I'm liking the finer grater for this one. This, this works a little better. There we go. Look at that mountain of cheese that is forming before my eyes. What manner of thing is this? Cole Tyler? Who's Tyler? With sharpness cheddar. This is a mild cheddar uh, because I have the Gruyere. I would go for a medium or a sharp. The problem is the sharper cheddar you go, the worse it is at melting. Granted, it's not that big of a problem in bechamel, but it's still something you got to be cognizant of. Um, sharp cheddar is very oily, so you got to be careful. All right, this is important. In other parts of the episode? <laughs> the, what, the uh, meat, meat tornado? Is that what you guys want? <laughs> yes. What about waffles? I mean, they just say they're good waffles. Like, what am I supposed to do? Oh, my God. Cal's at the low-cal calzone zone. <laughs> I almost lost a piece of wrapper in the pile of cheese. That would have been tragic. Okay. Gruyere. Here we go. Create this whole dang block. I suppose I can just put it down flat. Oh, that's so much easier. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why was I holding it up? I haven't eaten that many hot peppers. I've eaten a habanero. Um, I've not eaten the Carolina Reaper. Um, I will tell you guys, I just want to leak this to you guys a little bit. Expect a new charity fundraiser to come out next week. Uh, I plan on starting a new, a new fundraiser that involves eating hot peppers. Um, a very, uh, uh, a, 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 fr a friend of mine, a friend of the show, a very good, uh, uh, you know, very close fan of the show. He came up with the idea to make the Pulp Fiction um, uh, Big, Kahuna, Big Kahuna Burger. He passed away this past week, and he's made me want to, you know, find a way to uh, get some people to uh, uh, raise some money for ALS awareness. And I think that we've got a fun way to do that. So keep an eye open. I think on Monday is when that's going to be coming out. So keep an eye open. Sorry to. So I make it heavy in here. Let's talk about something fun. How about, uh, how about boogers? Those are funny. You guys like boogers? Corn or flour tortillas for tacos? Uh, fucking corn. I mean, it depends, really. No, I'm sorry. It totally depends. What am I saying? Uh, really, really depends. Um, it's got to be really good corn tortillas. Oh, what is happening with the sink? It's never happened to me in like a year and a half, two years of living here. And right now the sink is, is exploding. Okay. That is our cheese, ladies and gentlemen. We got about eight ounces of cheddar, about four ounces of Gruyere, about four ounces of Parmesan. This is going to make one hell of a mac and cheese. Oh, this is interesting. Can you do some college dorm friendly recipes? The, yeah, I, I mean, I... <laughs> the microwave is where most college dorm recipes hail, but I just want to say, by the way, sorry guys, I didn't mention this, we are partially covering our sauce, okay? We don't want it to evaporate too much, so we're partially covering it, leaving about a one inch gap. I'll show you right now. Just like that, see? We're just partially covering it. You can even leave your spoon in here if that helps. Don't leave your spoon in there, it's a bad idea. Don't do that. There we go. Um, I, def I think basics will definitely be addressing the woes of the common college student. 
in the very near future. It's just a matter of, of finding the, uh, the right recipes in the right moment. Right now, I'm just trying to focus on people who want to sort of, you know, grow their, their skills in the kitchen in general. But I will say that red sauce back there, that's what I made all through college. I would make red sauce and me and people on, on, my, on my floor and people in my dorm, my RA would come through and we would just all have red sauce. We'd watch Sopranos. It was magical. You guys just need like, you know, a genre bending uh, Italian mafia show to, to help you, you know, get through that. Ooh, they call that your Fraser tattoo. Oh, you guys recognize the Fraser tattoo? Hey, baby, I hate the blues are calling, talk salads and scrambled eggs. Um, I, 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 I've just, I was just telling Jess I've never been to Seattle, and I don't think I can ever go because then that would render, that, that's my favorite thing to say about this tattoo is that I have the Seattle skyline, but I've never been there. Protein birthday cake? No, I've not thought of that. Nope. Sorry. Okay, so, also, another thing we need to do is get our pasta going because we're about to make cheese sauce here. We need our pasta par cooks. So get a big old, oh, <laughs> get a big old pot of water bo boiling here, boys. Let's do it. Jess, thank you so much. I appreciate, appreciate your help right now. <laughs> Um, sorry, can't do that right now. But uh, the, all these all these uploads are going to be archived and they're going to be available for download. Uh, I'm I'm going to be re-uploading all these to YouTube so you can watch them anytime. So I'm sorry that you can't be here live, but uh, you'll be able to watch them anytime you want on YouTube. I didn't throw out any cheese. What are you talking about? <laughs> there was a little rind. There was rind. What do you want me to do with that? It was in New York City. I can't compost. They're like really worried about the cheese. I'm not worried at all. <laughs> sorry. Sorry you're worried, guys, but I'm feeling just fine. Okay. Well, I need a place to... All right. Here, we'll put all the cheese right here. Let's go. Okay. Getting this pot of water going. Always salt your water. You can't really see back here, but I'm salting the water because uh, it's going to make it boil faster. It's also going to help season the pasta. Heavily salt. More than you think you need. I, I probably just put a third of a cup of salt in that water. Okay. Um, and we're on pause a little bit be right now because I need to, uh, I need to get uh, the, that water boiling before we can start making bechamel. Anybody, uh, anybody cooking along? I'm going to come down on eye level here. Hey, guys. <laughs> Anybody cooking along at home? Anybody doing this along with me? What are you making? Introduce your helper. Jess, you want to come in? <laughs> sure. All right. Jess. All right. Everybody, this is Jess. Oh, I'm going to tilt up a little bit. So we still have to get like get down on our knees. Are you making a short joke? <laughs> hey, everyone. Oh, she fits without even having been done. <laughs> This is Jess. She's helping out with comments and she's fact checking me and 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 really keeping the live stream afloat. Honestly, she's really mostly I'm just drinking cocktails. <laughs> Speaking of which, are you okay on cocktails? I'm I'm yes. I've been over here drinking whiskey like a like a really uh, selfish person. Um, if, but uh, thank you, Jess. For she's also uh, vetting my my red sauce because that cheese makes me nervous too. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> She, she's really keeping the show afloat. I'm really interested. <laughs> uh, she, she's, she's, uh, she's also vetting my red sauce because she is more than half Ita half Italian. She's, she's mostly Italian, and uh, she, I mean, we, we were debating red sauce, and I was like, I need you to fact check my red sauce and make sure that I'm doing it right. Just one of us saved the cheese. <laughs> yeah, man, That's I really know funny. <laughs> All right, what do you guys want to talk about while we wait for this water to boil? What's on your minds? How are your lives? You know? Cocoa on red sauce? Are you drunk? Someone also asked about bourbon and pineapple for sauce. Jess equals best. Hey. <laughs> bourbon and pineapple? Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. If you, if you flambe the, 
you know, I did that for the um, rum ham. I did it with rum instead of bourbon. But if you if you flambe bourbon with sautéed pineapple, that'd be good as hell. I think that'd be great. No, no Malcolm in the Middle Thanksgiving episode. Make, let me make that emphatically clear. No Malcolm in the Middle. In the. Uh, What's my favorite whiskey? I mean, that's wh- who's my favorite child? What you, you, why are you asking me a mean question like that? Uh, th- like I was saying before, you know, Glenfiddich 15, this is the scotch that got me into scotch. So this is one of my, you know, just for nostalgia's sake, it's one of my favorites. Uh, and, you know, not too coincidentally, Angel's Envy, both the uh, rum cask and the Caribbean cask are two of my favorite American bourbons, obviously American, because that's what bourbon, anyway. Uh, two of my favorite bourbons being produced today, and uh, this is a really gorgeous, really tasty bottle of bottle of brown. Let's see what else we got going on. What's a tablespoon of ounces? I don't fucking know of what. <laughs> Top scotch together. I just showed you, dog. How old am I? I'm thirty. I'm thirty years years beautiful. I'm thirty years youthful and, and, and vibrant I'm 30 years old um, I just turned 30 back in September yeah Twin Peaks turned by yeah well, I gotta do a Twin Peaks by soon man I did the pancakes I did the coffee because those are very important elements of that show but even more important is cherry pie so expect that Libra no that's I'm a Virgo I'm not a Libra September 2nd I'm not a filthy Libra I don't even know what these are What is that going to tell them? Just trying to bring this out there. Mac and cheese, gluten-free. Just use uh, the rice pasta from Whole Foods, man. That stuff tastes like real, normal pasta. You, like, um, uh, Then again, bechamel has flour in it. I don't know what to tell you, man. I'm sorry. There are thickeners out there. There's xanthan gum. There's all kinds of thickeners you can use to make cheese sauces. I'm no expert on that. I've learned a few tricks because I have a few celiac friends, but, you know... Now is a great time to be a celiac person because there's so much gluten intolerance in our culture. It's actually great because it's given you guys so many options. Uh, and I'm, I'm very happy for celiac. I mean, because any other time in history in the 70s would have sucked to be celiac. Oh, my God. Everything was starchy back then. Pasta. Best grilled cheese sandwich was probably the one from Chef, man. I made that as a Patreon exclusive. Uh, it's a Patreon exclusive episode of Binging with Babish where I do exactly what he did. I used three different kinds of cheese. It was Parmesan, um, Gruyere, and uh, cheddar. It was it was these three things right here. <laughs> I didn't even realize. It's these three cheeses went into that grilled cheese. And he buttered it as he was testing it. And uh, it was really fabulous. It was a wonderful, wonderful grilled cheese. Give our sauce a little stir here. We got a good simmer going. Don't want to burn nothing. Mustn't burn our sauce. There we go. Make sure you stir, you stir your sauce intermittently or you're going to burn it. It's going to stick to the bottom and you're going to end up with all this black stuff in the bottom of your sauce and the whole thing is going to taste metallic and gross. Stop motion babish? Uh-oh. Did we lose? Are we losing? Uh-oh. How are we doing? Shit, I'm lagging. Oh no, oh no. It says I'm back now, but I don't. I don't even see myself. Hang on, I'm gonna refresh. <laughs> Do you? How's it looking over there? Oh no, it's working. Okay, it's working now. All right. Sorry, folks. Time Warner Spectrum problems. Blame them, not me. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. R.I.P. Stream. Why don't you, why don't you guys relax for a minute? <laughs> All right. Got the pasta water going back here. Got our sauce simmering. Then we're gonna get our bechamel going. I've got my buttered up casserole over here. I'm gonna preheat the oven to 375 degrees. There we go. It's a good thing it's a nice chilly 
rainy night here in New York because uh, otherwise this would be a pretty unpleasant experience. Uh, that's why I'm very excited to be doing some steak and some chicken, some roast things uh, in the near future because those are great things to do in the fall. This is something that you guys never see me do on the show is pull my shirt down like this. That's I have to constantly do that because I get these little armpit puffs like after I've been doing shit for too long. Pull it down. There we go. What see? is your favorite food? What is my favorite food? Guys, <laughs> come on. Um... If I could choose one food, like, okay, how about, how about, let's say instead of favorite food, how about um, death row meal, you know, last, last meal. Um, last meal would probably have to be a ribeye, you know, because it's black and blue um, with nothing else, <laughs> literally just the ribeye. That'd be, that'd be fabulous. Or boeuf bourguignon. I love boeuf bourguignon. It's one of my favorite things. I love stews. I love all stews. Pot of pho, um, just Yankee American stew. Love them all. I love seeing how like flavors develop and change over time. I'm gonna tilt the camera back down because we did introductions earlier, and now I'm gonna tilt it down so we can see what we're doing. You're wondering about the basil with the red sauce. What do you put it in? Oh my god! Thank you guys. I totally forgot about the basil. It's you know, it's really just for flavor, so it's not gonna kill you if you do what I'm doing right now and add it late. So I have some basil here. I got a couple sprigs. Right here, and I'm just gonna—I'm literally just gonna toss them right in, stir them in, keep them whole so you can fish them out later. Thank you for reminding me. See, this is this is a learning experience for all of us. It's not just for you guys; it's for me too. Is there a way to give like Reddit gold to the person who said that? That's that's very helpful. Black and blue is just like seared on the outside and fucking raw on the inside. I know that, f frankly, medium rare is like the ideal way to prepare meat, but there's something about a steak that's cooked, um, what's it called? Uh, not Philadelphia style. What's the, what, what, guys, what's the name for when a steak has just been like touched with, with heat on both sides and it's raw in the middle? What's it called? Yeah, it's black and blue, but there's another. There's a city that it's named after. Help me out, guys. Pittsburgh. That's it. Pittsburgh style steak. That's it. Oh, that's awesome. I never that. <clears throat> yep, black and blue, Pittsburgh style. I there's something about it that's very. I don't know. There's something romantic to me about it. It's it's a it's like a, of a bygone age almost. Like like that's how steaks were prepared Milk back in the steak. 40s when. <laughs> what's up? Milk steak would be my last meal because it would kill me because I hate it and it was terrible. Milk, milk steak is a, is, a, is a mistake. Thank you. I'll be here all night. Literally, because I'm going to be here all night. Okay. How are we doing on time? We still got an hour here. That's perfect, actually, because the mac and cheese is going to bake for about 35 minutes. I guarantee we're going to have that in the oven in the next few minutes here because we're going to start making fish milk any minute. I still haven't heard from anybody who's cooking along. Is anybody cooking along tonight? Should we turn on our ovens yet? Yeah, if you are cooking along, 375 right now. I want those ovens on. Sarah Durf, you're cooking along. Van the Key of Lane, you're cooking along. Chef Curry, 666. Mark of the Beast. Cook along. Excellent. Over easy. Milk steak. No. It's, he, Charlie orders milk steak over hard. Doesn't order it over easy. That might be halfway deep. No, it would still be bad. It's still steak boiled in milk. It would still be terrible. So guys, uh, tonight, instead of macaroni, I'm going with radiatory. This is a fun sort of shape, and it's got all these little crevices that all the cheese can get soaked up into. I was going to do shells, but there was a lady that was next to me in the pasta aisle, and I felt like she was judging me for getting shells, because it made me feel like a little kid. And so I went like, okay, let's get radiatory. <laughs> it made me feel a little better about my, my decisions as an adult. I'm going to recenter this.
ordering pizza, what five toppings should it... Five toppings? Okay. Onions, peppers, mushrooms, sausage. Onions, peppers, mushrooms, sausage. Buffalo and mozzarella. That's it. Or if you're t ordering from like a normal shitty, not shitty, when I say shitty, I mean like, I love shitty pizza places. <laughs> it's like, you know, your typical pizza place, which is, I love to death. Um, uh, the last thing I'd put on there, it's pepperoni, making a meat lovers with a, with a couple veg, veg on there. That's, that's where it's at. No, double fit. It's a, it, that, that's, that's, a, that's a term of endearment. When we decide, like, on something awesome, I always just go, like, yeah, fucking we're making mac and cheese with cheddar and gruyere. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Garlic. Basil. No, no, you guys are thinking too highfalutin here. Water's My water's not boiling yet, so no. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to start the cheese once my water's boiling. If your water's boiling, yeah, go for it. Because the, um, the, you know, this, this pasta needs to be cooked, let's see. It's saying this should be cooked for 8 to 10 minutes, which means I'm going to cook it for 6. Because I want it super al dente, almost underdone, essentially underdone. Because it's going to keep cooking in the cheese sauce, it's going to absorb the cheese sauce. So yes, if your water is boiling, get the pasta in there and get your cheese sauce going. I'm, I'll be right behind you, because <laughs> I'm still waiting on my water here. Apparently I have a very slow stove. Add a little more salt in there, try to help it along. What is the purpose of salt in boiling water? Salt lowers the temperature at which water boils. I don't know if that's true. It, it literally, it, it actually makes water boil faster. That is a fact, I know that. I don't know if it lowers the temperature, but it makes water boil faster. And also, it's, it helps season the, the, uh, the pasta, to, like on an interior level. It's, it's soaking up salt, essentially, while it's cooking. So it is important. And just keep crushing your tomatoes. When you like, I still have some whole tomato, not whole, but like big chunks of tomatoes in here. And as I'm stirring, I'm just give them a little crush. And at the end of this, we're going to end up with a nice marinara sauce. Oh, my water's just starting to bubble. It's just getting those little. <laughs> How you guys doing tonight? How's your how's your how's your Thursday? I want to hear how everybody's Thursday is. All right, Dank Jack, go answer some questions on Twitter. Stranger Things, you're right. Stranger Things comes out at midnight tonight. Also, iPhone X pre-orders. Am I right? At midnight? Is that iPhone X? The iPhone X? It's the future in your hand. <laughs> iPhone X is the future. A lot of people are asking about Scooby-Doo. I don't know what kind of food is in Scooby-Doo. Uh, just giant sandwiches. Sandwiches is the height of like a like a, a, a man. Um, but no, iPhone X is the is the, the iPhone that's like all screen. It's just like you look at it and the whole front of it is just screen. It's so weird that like I'm having conversations with Jess, but there's a big reflector between me and her, so I can't see her. And I'm talking with her through the live stream, even though she's like right across the room. It's a very, very, very surreal experience. Yeah, Stranger Things is, is that tonight at midnight? I think that's when it comes out. That's very, very exciting. Yes, it is the future, Cartman. Yes. I'm kidding. I know, I, I know iPhones behind the times with everything. I, I don't. I don't care. I'm okay. Uh, I'm sure we got newcomers here. I'm drinking a where? Oh, where'd it go? Here it is. I'm drinking a, a Glenfiddich 15. I'm gonna keep knocking it against the side of the thing here. Glenfiddich 15 single malt scotch. Once I'm done with this, I'm gonna switch over to the Angel's Envy rum cask rye. That's what's next. And my water's just starting to boil back here, so we're getting very close to making us some cheese sauce. 
me get a big old bowl ready too, guys. We talked about this. We talked about how important it is to have good mixing bowls, and these are good mixing bowls. I love OXO. These things literally have lasted me 11 years now. I've had these for the longest time. Um, I'm starting to starting to get scratched up, but it's, it's, it's okay. And that's well, my tattoos. Which ones? We got uh, this is the original Kodak logo from 1911, Eastman Kodak Company. Uh, this is a, a Katrina code from after Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. This is a lens focal length diagram. Um, this is this is the Seattle skyline from uh, the popularized by the. <laughs> Seminal American classic, Fraser. Um, this is a uh, my fantasy bakery that I want to have one day. It's a it's a whisk and knife, and it says "born and bread," but bread is spelled like, you know, like bread. It's fun. Um, and I have a couple others that I won't show you right now. Uh, almost got our water boiling here, guys. What do other streamers do when they're waiting for stuff to boil? What do, what do they do? Does pineapple go on pizza? Yeah, sure it does. Balvenie Caribbean cast. No, I love the Balvenie Caribbean cast. I just had this, actually. This is the uh, Balvenie um, sherry cask, 15 years. This is like dessert in a glass. It's so good. Uh, but it was really intense. This is like, you can only have one glass of this. That's about how much you throw away because it's really intense. Very, very sweet. All right, my oven is preheated. And I just finished my Glenfiddich 15. Which means I'm gonna switch over to Angel's Envy. That's this seems like a good time filler while we're waiting for the water to boil. Golden Girls cheesecake. Interesting. I didn't know about this. I've watched a little bit of Golden Girls, but not enough to know that apparently. Who makes the cheese? Who makes the the, the cheesecake? Which weighs more, a pound of stone or a pound of cotton? You tricky bastard. You think you're going to get me with that? This ain't my first radio. Would you consider making some food some Miyazaki films? Absolutely. Uh, Spirited Away, the um, dumplings and the feast that the parents get into. Uh, that, that's, that's something I've been looking forward to doing for a long time. So now we're moving on to Angel's Envy rye Caribbean cask. Or uh, rum cask, rather. Caribbean cask is like an extra $50 for some reason. Almost boiling. Come on. Let's turn the light back here. Let a bottle of alcohol. You're right. I can't let uh, the alcohol stay open because it does go bad almost immediately. So you've got to be very, very careful. There's a Golden Girls Cafe in Harlem, and I didn't know about I this. Heard about that. Why didn't you tell me when we? <laughs> as soon as we met, why didn't you tell me? You should Oh, oh my god, it was a little open. Wow, that's really... Oh my god, that's so good. Wow, that's very embarrassing, guys. That you... <laughs> this is not rum. This is, this is bourbon. This is a rye bourbon, Angel's Envy, rye-finished bourbon that is aged in rum casks. Yes, aged in rum casks. And it's very, very interesting. It's very spicy and and it's it's really very good. Ooh, Monty Python question. What's the question? I don't know that crazy lobster thing this morning. Oh god. <laughs> Relax guys, come on. Not made of money over here. Alright. We got Radiatori. Anybody watch uh, Master of None? Most recent season? Allora. There we go. I'm a radiatory right here. I'm going to dump this in. And it's the package says to uh, cook it for six to eight minutes, which means I'm going to cook it for about, I'm sorry, it says to cook it for eight to ten minutes, which means I'm going to cook it for about six. Yep. 
set a timer. So I don't have an internal clock that can keep track of that kind of shit. There we go. I'm going to stir my, my red sauce. I know most of you guys aren't making all three of these at once. Anybody who is, hats off. But uh, make sure your red sauce is getting stirred intermittently as it slowly simmers. And now that I've got the pasta cooking, it's time to start making some bechamel. Let's do it. How much pasta should they be making? A pound? Uh, yeah, one pound of pasta, whole package. Very good question. 16 ounces, one pound of pasta. You, I'm sure you guys aren't used to seeing this, wor this work surface, so... Uh, there, it's closed, okay? What is this sticking out? Oh, there's a tag sticking out. That's why it looks open. Now it's closed. See that? It's closed. All right. So, with bechamel, you know, you guys might have no noticed I'm not measuring anything tonight, and it's because a lot of these recipes, sauces especially, can be more about feel. And it can be more about like you know the role that you know this food is supposed to play in this dish and i know that you know for for enough bechamel to support uh, uh, uh one pound of pasta and all this cheese probably need maybe two tablespoons to i'm sorry this is more like four tablespoons ish let's try to make it four four tablespoons of butter and an equal amount of whole milk. Bechamel is always the same amount of butter to whole milk. My sink is, ex is, is spitting at me. It's not fair. The, I've lived here for two years. It's never done that. Okay, I'm going to crank... Oh. I'm gonna crank this guy on. Let's put it over medium high heat. We want this bubber, this bubber. We want this butter bubbling is what we want. And then we're going to add an equal amount of flour. I'm going to do that with one of these spoons over here. By the way, uh, I'm expecting my roommates to come home at any minute now, and this is going to add to the fun of the situation. I really hope you guys get to meet him as well. And he, and he's on a date. So we'll see, you know, I, I, I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but he's on a fucking date. <laughs> so. Yeah, you guys have seen my roommate before. You've seen his arms. He comes in for taste tests every now and then. He has beautiful arms. They're bigger than mine. They're not as vascular. They don't have, he doesn't have as good, as good veinage going on, but they're wider. So I, I get it, you know, I understand. Alright, so we're melting up this butter, and this is over medium high heat, so we don't want to burn the butter, we don't want to brown it. So I'm keeping it moving so it all melts. I might uh, chop this piece in half so it melts a little faster. There we go. What? That is a lot of beer. That is vascular. You, you guys want to see one of my trade secrets? To get myself a little veinier before I shoot, I'll go like this. That just makes the veins pop. Look at them. Pop. Oh, okay. All right, we got butter. Here we go. Here we go. All right, butter is mostly melted. There we go. It's it is foamy. So now I'm going to add about four tablespoons of flour. Turn down the heat a little bit. And I'm just eyeballing this because I know what a bechamel is supposed to look like, and you will learn as well as you practice. It should be thick, but not chunky. It should be liquidous, but not thin. See that? Can you see that? Here, I'm gonna hold it up a little bit. See, it's just this thick brown liquid. And this is how we thicken some lovely cheese sauces, all right? We can even add a little bit more flour to that. And you can, we're gonna cook it for a little bit because 
we're gonna cook off that raw flour. As soon as you throw the flour in there, you're gonna smell this raw flour smell. And that's what we're trying to get rid of. We wanna lose that, we wanna toast the flour in, in the butter. Alton Brown did a great bit on how uh, uh, when you do this, the flour is, every granule is being coated in fat and being cooked. And the Maillard reaction is occurring on a very small level. All right, so we got this great roux going here. This is called a roux. And it's cooked off most of the, flour, the raw flour smell. So I'm going to start very slowly whisking in some whole milk. You see immediately it's starting to thicken. That's what it is, it's a thickener. I'm gonna keep pouring it in. Don't wanna add it too quickly. And all told, we're not there yet, but we're you know once by the end of this we're probably gonna right, that's our pasta. I'm gonna let it cook a little bit more because we gotta finish up this bechamel. So, you know, I noticed that this is becoming grainy when I don't whisk it. So whoever asked, you know, why does my bechamel turn out grainy, maybe that's why. You need to really keep it moving the entire time. To the point where I'm even going to let my pasta overcook. I'd rather let my pasta overcook than stop moving my bechamel. Whole milk versus heavy cream? Oh, definitely whole milk. Heavy cream is going to be a little bit too much, I think. I think it's going to be too rich. Yeah, it's thickening up really nice. Every time I add the milk, it just keeps thickening. All right, I'm gonna drain my pasta quick. Turn down the heat on this. Are <laughs> telling me to save the pasta? Yeah, I'm saving the pasta, guys. Thank you. Right, it's coming out. Coming out right now. <laughs> What? Just save the pasta. Ta da! <laughs> oh, God, that's going to make me laugh. Just get in there! Save it! <laughs> Don't let the pasta suffer because of Andrew's ignorance. It's innocent pasta. Pasta is drained and saved. Don't worry, guys. Relax, okay? The bechamel is more important than the pasta, I promise. All right, so we want this to be a little thinner than the average cheese sauce because we're going to be adding cheese, and that's going to thicken it up tremendously. All right, see that? That's right about where I want it, right there. Nice, thick, creamy thing. There we go. Add all of the cheddar, like so. What? <laughs> Still? Oh God, the bechamel! <laughs> yeah, no, they're sweet. I love, I love. I really love my audience. They are the sweetest people. What kind of pasta do you recommend for red sauce? I mean, you know, I really like long, skinny pastas. Your, your, you know, your spaghettis. Your, uh, your. Um, Bucatini, I love Bucatini. Um, I love uh, Cavatelli. Um, see, this is already getting a little too thick. Let's add a little bit more milk back in there. There we go. There we go. Okay, okay. There we go. And now, turn the heat up a little bit so this cheese melts. And we're also going to add our Gruyere. over here. Oh, yeah. Did you miss some cheese? Hmm? Did you miss some cheese? Did I miss some? Did you forget some? I mean, there's a little bit left behind here. I'll get it. Don't worry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a third of the Parmesan. Maybe half. Let's do half. Half of the Parmesan. About two ounces of Parmesan. Two to three. 
doesn't really matter. This, this, this is the thing about is like what we're doing right now comes down to feel and flavor, not 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 measuring. You know, learn the way things are supposed to look and feel and taste. And somebody said, "What? <laughs> now what? <laughs> what?" Jess, I'm gonna need you here for every future. I know you just came over to hang out, but like, yeah, I'm gonna need you here for all these. So consider yourself hired. I know it's a long commute from Brooklyn to Harlem. <laughs> it's saving the pasta, saving the, yeah. Okay. Get this crap out of the way. There we go. We got a nice smooth cheese sauce coming together here. And I'm going to season it with uh, salt and pepper. I like, you know, some people might use white pepper, but I actually like flecks of, of black pepper in my cheese sauce. I do. I don't know what that makes me, but I don't, I don't really care. Hmm. The pasta is perfectly undercooked. Don't worry, guys. It's fine. Everything worked out. Okay, and as is the case with everything on this show, what is the most important thing to do after seasoning? Tasting. There's a Wegmans opening in Brooklyn? Yep. Damn, you didn't know that? Awesome. Dude. It's one of the most important facts that I've learned in the past few years. It's not opening until next year. So that, I tasted that, that needed more salt. Because you're trying to imagine, you know, this is a little salty as a cheese sauce, but imagine what it's gonna be like when it's coating a pound of pasta. So you need to over salt just a little bit. It needs to be just like more salty than you eat with just a spoon. So let's see what that's like. Look how stringy that is. Oh, it's good. Okay. Yeah. Very, very hot. So now, I also, I used a lot of, you know, I used a pound of pasta here, but I ended up with kind of an arbitrary amount of cheese sauce. I don't want to overdo, I don't want to overdo things, so I'm going to start with maybe that much, which I would say about, you know, that's probably about three quarters to five eighths of the pasta. Does it matter what order you put the cheese in? No, it does not matter. It does not matter. I like putting the Parmesan last because it's... I don't know why. Uh, I just start with, I don't know why. I don't know why. Sorry. But uh, no, it does not matter. As long as everything ends up melty and gooey, that's really all that matters in this world. Okay. All right, guys, look at this, huh? Oh, look at, oh my God, oh my God. Look at the stringies. Look, you seen the stringies in there? Oh my God. Oh my God. Shut up. All right, so this is looking really cheesy. We Oh, look at the strings. Look at that. That's what we want to see. Are you kidding me? Look at that. That's insane. Okay, that's looking a little cheesy. We can add a little bit more pasta. We definitely want it to be cheesy, but... Oh, my God. Ah! That's driving me banana sandwich. I just made a Dane Cook joke. Kill me right now. Kill me right now. Whoops. Just made a really bad... Oh, look at the strip. Are you seeing this? Look at that. It's like science. That's insane. Oh, it's like... Oh. All right. So, obviously, we need to make sure that this is seasoned properly once the it's in the pasta. So, taste here. And see, it needs salt. I thought it was over-salted before, but it needs salt. A lot, actually. And it needs pepper. And I know this is on the induction cup top, don't worry. I'm keeping it away from the heat. Oh my god. I can't get over this, I'm sorry. It's just like the coolest thing. I need to like Instagram this. <laughs> Let me see if I can like... Yeah, you guys are going to see a live Instagram capture right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move the induction cup top of the way because we're done with it. 
hopefully forever because of all that freaking racket it makes. There we go. Remove the mac and cheese front and center right there. I'm going to get some beautiful Instagram footage. This way though. There we go. Should I do slow? I'm gonna I'm gonna do it slow mo. That's the that's the way to do it. Oh my god. Oh my god! This is fucking gold. Oh my god! <laughs> Alright, that's nuts. Okay. Now I've added salt and pepper. Let's see how this is tasting. Still, more salt. I know, seems like a lot. I'm talking about a pound of pasta here. Oh, those strings are driving me absolutely nuts. That is so fucking beautiful. I'm sorry for cursing. Jess is, is a born again Adventist. I just made that up, it's not a real thing. I mean, it depends on whether you not like pepper. I like pepper. I like pepper in my mac and cheese. I like salt too, and it's still, frankly, undersalted. Unbelievably, it's still not there. Okay, so it'll be. God, I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm gonna do another one. Sorry, this <laughs> is getting stringier as time goes on. As it cools down, it's getting stringier and stringier, which is insane. I mean, it's like a sci-fi movie. That's nuts. Sorry for. Oh, okay. Here we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it right next to the mic. Okay. Here we go, guys. You ready for this? Oh my god. You like that? Oh my god. Oh, oh. Ooh, gentle dose. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> that should be good. You're welcome. I'll be crazy. There, there it is. Okay. So, casserole. And uh, let's loop up this casserole. I know after what I just did, that's a little suggested, but that's not what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and spray this a little bit. A little bit of nonstick spray. Even it out. A little bit of paper towel. There we go. Now, let's dump this in. Let's do it. I mean, come on, folks. Get out of. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. There we go. Spread that out evenly. I think it used a lot more cheese than I did in the episode and it's really showing it's really good looking very very happy with what's happening here there we go mac and cheese spread let us set that aside because we gotta make our topping real quick i know i just said uh, we were done with the uh cooked out forever but we're not we are not. Let's clean up the workspace a little bit because there's some spilled milk. I'm not going to cry about it. We are going to clean it up. There we go. Let's clean that up. What derogatory things are they saying about me right now? I'm cleaning up. Come on, guys, relax. I'm cleaning up. It gets, it gets a little hectic in here. I'm not used to doing things live. This is a very new experience. All right. Plug that in. Oh, 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 oh. video decoder just dropped. Black magic. Um, uh, 
what's it called? Studio Mini Recorder, whatever it is. Okay, put that there. Are we in focus? Does it look soft focus to you guys? Let's. There we go. That's looking in focus. Okay. My other favorite pan, the Tefal Professional 12-inch non-stick skillet, into which we're going to dump. I'm going to use the back of a fork because I don't feel like getting a knife. I'm going to dump uh, probably two tablespoons of butter. And I'm going to start heating this up. And we're going to make our topping. <clears throat> and then this guy's going in the oven. And Why do you use this spray? Uh, just to help it release. So, you know, when we're serving, we don't want it to stick to the size of the, of the casserole. I'm just over here eating it in the corner. I can't see it. I'm just eating it. Mmm. Oh, so good. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna get this butter melted, and then we want panko breadcrumbs. That is the only way to go. Is panko? That's the way to go. That, that's panko. That's what you want to do. Uh, we're gonna melt about two tablespoons of butter. And normally I throw some fresh herbs in there, but I don't know if I have them handy. I don't know if I feel like. Oh, but I have them here. No excuses. No excuses, let's add the herbs. I'm going to scoot this over a little bit so my cutting board has some room. Salted or unsalted butter? Unsalted, always unsalted. I don't know why salted butter exists. Because you want to be in control of the salt that's going in there. I don't know why that's a thing. Alright. I'm gonna use rosemary. Last time I used thyme, but you know rosemary is gonna be very good with the mac and cheese, with the, uh, with the with the with the breadcrumb topping. It's gonna be very very good. Just a little bit. I'm gonna go crazy here. Just want a little bit of herbaceousness. We're not trying to you know blow everybody's minds here. We're just trying to bring a little something to the to the party that wasn't there before. Now this is a great opportunity to practice your your pan tossing. In fact, Jess, I might put you to I might put you to the test here. <laughs> I know she made the mistake of earlier tonight telling me that she she hasn't worked with saute pans that much, and uh, this is an excellent opportunity. All right, that's the rest of my breadcrumbs. Perfect. So once those get toasted, you can see right now they're glued to the bottom. They're not moving. But once those get warmed up a little bit, we're going to see that they they release almost immediately. I'm just going to chop these herbs up a little bit. They're pretty fine, finely chopped. I agree. Salted butter is useless. It's decaf Oh, thank you. It's like, what... <laughs> Except, it's, it's funny, it's like decaf has not enough in it, and salted butter has too much. But they're both just as useless as a result. Because butter would be nowhere without salt, but you, you gotta give me a choice, you know? You gotta give me the option to put in as much or as little salt as I want. I seriously can't think of a single useful application for salted butter. Can somebody shout one out? So, 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 somewhere where it would be an advantage over unsalted butter. Like when you're in a world without salt or something. I'm gonna loosen these up a little bit. See that? They were glued down and they're turning brown a little bit, but once I take them off, they are freely moving about the cabin, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, you really shit on salted butter. Yeah, fuck salted butter. <laughs> Good. All right, Jess, you want to try doing a little bit of this? See the tossing I'm doing? You want you want you want to try it yourself? <laughs> that's why we that's why we do this show. This is this learning experience. All right, so so what I'm doing is I'm pushing it all down to the end of the pan uh -huh. like that. 
and then I'm sort of letting it go up and back. Yeah. It's, it's, it's That's very terrifying. hard to describe. <laughs> <laughs> so it's down at the end, and I'm sort of just flipping it. Just uh -huh. pretend like you're, you're sort of bringing it back toward you. Okay, I'll try. You get it all down towards the end of the clock. Yeah. And, uh, hey, I just saw a little one there. <laughs> hey! Hey! Oh, I did hey. it! Oppa! Oppa! <laughs> There we go! Oh, God, Damn, that's... that was a big one! You didn't even lose a crumb! I'm gonna end on a high note. <laughs> Everybody give a big hand for Jess. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That was beautiful. Good job. Up top. No, you're leaving me hanging yes. in front of the internet. Thank you. Alright, beautiful job, Jess. Thank you. And now, towards the end here, it's getting nice and golden brown. Go check out the love that you're getting right now. Look at that. Alright, I'm gonna add uh, the herbs right here. A little bit of rosemary, because I want to get I want those to get a little bit of heat. So we're just gonna wake it up a little bit. Almost, I already smell it right now. So that was somebody who had never done that before, and she just came in here and rocked it. Just try it. You might make a mess. You might spill a little bit. I do it all the time, and I've I've practiced a lot. What matters is that you're you're you're, you're trying it out. You're seeing if you can do it. Same thing with crack, cracking, uh, cracking, egg, cracking an egg with one hand. You're never going to do it until you try it. <laughs> you can watch all the videos in the world. You can learn every tutorial from every great chef, but you're not going to be able to do it until you just give it a shot for yourself. Are the breadcrumbs a preference or important? They're a preference. I like a crunchy top to my, to my mac and cheese. Okay. I think those are nicely toasted and golden brown. So um, I'm going to kill the heat here in a second. Just want maybe just a little bit more color there. Here we have our mac and cheese. Look at that mac and cheese, huh? Oh, yeah. Now those are getting nice and toasty golden brown. That's what I'm after. Oh, yeah. I smell a little bit of herbs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna season just just because we want to season every element of a dish. I'm gonna I'm gonna season these with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. We don't want one part to have to to stand up for seasoning. We don't want one part seasoning to have to like compensate for another parts. You know, so everything is gonna be seasoned. There we go. And I'm just gonna. Pour these over, huh? He's fine, guys. Don't worry. He's fine. He has an he has an emergency word that he hasn't texted me. I mean, I haven't checked my phone in a while, and I'm sure he's fine. <laughs> Try to get every little corner all covered up. It doesn't really matter. I mean, like, you know, those, if you don't cover it all up, it's kind of rustic looking. If you do cover it all up, it's kind of, kind of pro. I mean, that's not fully covered. Kind of, oop. Get the mic. Sorry. I kind of dig it. And then, so, I've got the breadcrumbs on there. Last but not least, I'm going throw the parm on there. I mean, come on. Get out of here. Get out of town. Oh. Alright guys. That's it for the mac and cheese. If you don't have a lid for your pot like this one, throw some tin foil over the top. If you do have a lid, lid it up and we're going to bake it for I believe 10 to 15, 15 to 20 minutes and then we're going to take the lid off and let the cheese crisp up. And we'll have us some mac and cheese. In it goes. So I'm going to get my red sauce to stir. Make sure nothing's sticking and burning. There we go. It's simmering nicely. Let just bare simmer. Very, very, very light simmer. Alright guys, we got 22 minutes. So, 
we use that time to make some salsa. Now we're getting rid of the cooked up for good. I promise you. Ooh, it's hot. Okay. What are they saying, Jess? They're worried about the laundry guy. They're worried about what? The laundry guy. The laundry guy's fine. <laughs> it's just fine. I wish I could have given them a taste of what we were doing tonight. I do. They really wanted that. Next time. Next time I will... <clears throat> I have to get him to come here as late as possible. I'll get the laundry guy to come on the camera. Are you going to finish it before the time is Um, we'll go, we'll, we'll, we'll go a couple minutes late if we have to. I hear some, I hear some partying outside. I live in Harlem and I keep the windows open this time of year, so it's a little lively out there. Anybody live in Harlem want to come over and hang out right now? I'm kidding. Don't do not do that. You're not inviting me. I'm sorry. 24 hour stream. Relax. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if you know how stressful this is on the human body. This is something else. Um, okay. I'm going to rinse off my knife real quick. Because I need it. Or we're going to next. We're going to make salsa while the mac and cheese and the... Other. Give me a moment. Why is my sink so messed up? This is crazy. I'm a little concerned. I have to talk to my sister. Have you ever put dark chocolate in a chili? Yes. Not dark chocolate, but cocoa powder, which is essentially dark chocolate. Yes. Uh, uh, cocoa powder, dark chocolate, chocolate in general uh, can really wake, wake up a, a, a chili. It's re not wake up, I'm sorry. Mellow down a chili and, and really... Uh, I give it some deep, interesting, earthy flavors. Absolutely add chocolate to your chili, for sure. Did that perform well? Oh, they're calling me a hero. Well, are you a hero? This is really good for my ego. You, you are a hero. <laughs> Jess is a hero, guys, seriously. Where would this live stream be without Jess right now? <laughs> I would be blind and in the dark. She is the guiding light by which this live stream prospers. All right, so we got our diluted uh, uh, vinegar and water solution here. I mean, it's just cheese, so you know, nothing to worry about. Germatically, that's um, it's not a real word. I just made that up. It's fine. There we go. What? Now what? I'm even going to do it to the knife, actually, because I got some junk sticking on the knife. Hit it with the vinegar. And look at that. Clean as a whistle. Clean as a whistle, Bobby. Gout. That's an old man's disease. Any King of the Hill fans out there? <laughs> Bet y'all didn't know I was a King of the Hill fan. Let's see it blow up. I want to see all the King of the Hill fans freak out right now. Yes, it does. Vinegar kills germs. Shut up. Yeah, there we go. With the propaniacs, propaniacs. Somebody needs to start a King of the Hill fan club that's called the Propaniacs. I don't know why that is. It doesn't exist. I'll say Futurama is better. Shut up. It's not true. I'll, st I'll start a fight with you. I'll start an internet fight with you guys right now. You want to know the funniest line that's ever been said in any cartoon or television show is when Bobby and Joseph come up to Hank and they're dressed up in like suits and ties and Hank says, well, you're all dressed up. Are you boys going to the dentist? <laughs> it's the single funniest thing I've ever heard. I was in a ball crying when I saw that. All right, Bobby. All right, no more, no more King of the Hill impressions. I can do better impressions than King of the Hill. I can do um, Jora from from Game of Thrones, and coincidentally, his impression also sounds exactly like my Ben Kenobi impression. Which is, um, it's weird that those sound exactly the same, but it it just it just works. 
Um, okay, here we go. We're making salsa, guys. So we got some vine fresh tomatoes. See, they're on the vine here. Dude, you're... <laughs> They're dragons, Khaleesi. They were never meant to be tamed. But then I can take the same voice and say, You don't need to see his identification. You don't need to see his identification. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids we're looking for. He can go about his business. <laughs> you can go about your business. <laughs> Move along. They're dragons, Khaleesi. He can go about his business. <laughs> I cringe all you want. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> okay. The only other one I can do is, is Bane, which is... Oh. <laughs> it sounds like, like he's stretching whenever he's telling you. Oh. So you think doctors is your ally? <laughs> Message is being held for review. Wow. Wow. I'm trying. Here we go. Alright, that's it. You think you adopted the drive. You were merely adopted, Blade, and I lost the line. I was born in it. <laughs> Someone said that Bane just get out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy I love you guys thank you guys for tuning in this is a lot of fun a lot of fun okay um, so we're gonna start <laughs> I'm gonna get a bowl out let's put my ultimate salsa in two there we go and I'm gonna start slicing tomatoes salsa the reason I started it with it on the uh, in the episode and I'm ending with it now is because it's so quick and easy is that this is a great opportunity to learn how to you know, utilize some some chopping skills and we're going to do the same thing we did with onions place some slight slices across the tomato and then directly down the center and then just saw through into pieces that you would like to see on a chip so relatively small think of your ideal chip and keep your hands when you're holding the food Keep your hands in a claw. I didn't go to culinary school, so anybody who went to culinary is going to be like, oh, you're doing it wrong. And I know, okay, I'm sorry. But the, the idea is, the, the one thing that I know is that you are holding the food with a claw. This keeps your fingers out of the direct way of the knife. If you cut through your fingers like this, that's gonna, you're going to lose part of the finger. You go like this, you're just going to lose a little bit of skin. And uh, so just hold everything whenever you can with a claw. See that? We got a nice chopped half a tomato. Which I'm going to scoop into the bowl. And I'm going to continue doing this, the rest of the tomatoes, while I try to think of other impressions I can do. I can do a 19, um, like, like a, like a, um, like a 1920s radio voice. I did that for, uh, the popcorn episode. Item! This week in the news, Tabitha Buxton. Starry-eyed heiress to the Buxton Marmalade Fortune. <laughs> and uh, it's dumb. I don't care. That's all my impressions. That's all I've got. So you guys don't have to worry about any more coming down the line. Because that's all I've got. Jess is laughing. She is. That's okay. As long as Jess is laughing, I know that, it, that it's, it's, uh, everything's going to be alright. Alright, and I'm just going to do it to tomato salsa because, frankly, uh, there's two of us in here and we're not going to eat all of it, so maybe I'll eschew the three tomatoes that I call for in the recipe and just do a two tomato salsa and we'll just, we'll just relax because we are getting close to the end of the live stream. Go. You need a sharp knife to cut a tomato properly. You cannot do this with a dull knife. 
You will cut your fingers. You will make crappy cuts of tomato. You will disappoint your friends, your family, your dog, the people closest and dearest to you. You Maybe must... All you do is cook, drink, and watch TV. Wait, is there, is some, is there something wrong with that? Yeah, that sounds pretty ideal, actually. To that me. sounds great. I wish that's all I did, <laughs> man. Like great I don't, like, <laughs> like, that's something that people don't quite realize about this show, is, this, is that I make it entirely on my own. Basics I make with a crew, but binging I make by myself in my house, and I edit it, and I do the sound mixing, the color correct, and the everything, and uh, it takes, that alone, binging alone takes about 60 hours a week, and people think that I'm a YouTuber in my underwear, which sometimes I am, <laughs> but most of the time, I've been, so far since becoming a full-time YouTuber, I've been way busier than I ever was with a full-time job. And I'm not complaining because I'm doing something that I love and it's absolutely amazing. But I do want you guys to know that I'm not sitting on my ass. I'm working hard to make new, bigger, better content. And this is part of that. It's live streaming, bi-weekly live streams. This is going to become a regular thing. I want you guys to get drunk with me and, and, and learn and make mistakes with me. That's what this is all about. So I'm going to hit that a little bit of vinegar because, frankly, vinegar is only going to help us in this recipe. It's not going to hurt what we're eating. And you're right. A, uh, diluted vinegar will not sanitize. But pure vinegar will. But we don't need to sanitize after cutting tomatoes. So now we're going to move on to the red onion. I'm just going to do half the red onion because we only did um, three tomatoes. And... This is a great trick if it works. Let's see if it works right now. If you're learning how to cut things, you want to keep your hands safe. Take your onion, peel off the outer layer, pull it back. Oh, it's working. This doesn't always work. Pull it, peel off the outer layer and see that? I left it on. I left it on the heel of the onion. There are two parts of the onion. There's the heel. I'm just making this up. I don't know if it's actually called the heel. But this part of the onion, the, the uh, this, uh, uh, root stem, roots, whatever, and then I cut off the pointy bit, and and uh, I've left that connected at the heel of the onion, and that's given me a little handle now. I can hold the onion and stabilize it without getting my fingers in the way of the knife. If you're learning how to use a knife, if you're just first learning how to chop, and you're scared of cutting yourself and having to go to the emergency room, it's a great way to hold the onion. You'll see in a moment. See, I'm keeping my hands way out of the way of the onion. I'm going to do it up here because I prefer the stability, but if you're learning, that is the best darned way, I swear to you folks at home. What are people saying right now? He's live. Yeah, I am live. Duh. No shit, dude. <laughs> kind of the whole thing that we're doing right now. I'm sorry, that was mean. <laughs> I don't know if you're saying that of, out of warmth and kindness or what. How are we doing on time? Oh dear, it's 9.52. Boys and girls, we are nearing the end of our live stream. If the sauce isn't done, that's fine. Let it keep simmering. You don't need me on the webcam to tell you to keep simmering it. Taste it. See if it tastes good. If it's too bright, if it's too uh, 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 tomatoey and, and, and metallic, add sugar. Add a carrot. Let it. Let the carrot stew in it. Let it stew up to four hours. That's fine. Sauce loves to be simmered. You could let it go for literally another four hours, and it would only get better. I think that one hour is the absolute bare minimum that you want to simmer it. So just do that if that's all the time you have. But, you know... I love being compared. This is the nicest thing that anybody's ever said to me. Anybody who's anybody who's comparing me to Bob Ross, you deserve a uh, you deserve a, a, a I don't know you deserve a big hug, because that's really a nice thing to say to a person. So I have uh, I have a clove of garlic here that I'm crushing into our salsa. There we go. Bob Ross is the foot. I dressed as Bob Ross for Halloween a few years ago, and uh, you know. That was a very important thing for me to be able, be able to do. Um, I'm looking for my cumin and my spice cabinet right now. I wish you guys could see it.
is I'd love for you to see more of my kitchen. You know, I'll, 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 I'll pan up and you'll get to see where I keep my, my spices. There we go. This is my spice uh, closet up here. So we're looking for cumin right now. How bald is my head at the moment? Is it super bald? So where's my cumin? There it is. Got the cumin. What I need is a camera up so I can do this and then the camera can come back down without me having to go. Yeah. There we go. Lock it down. Come on. You know you're on tripod, Andy. We can do this. Okay. Little touch of cumin. I just want a little bit, just that much, you know? To, like I'm doing kind of a half recipe of what we sh what we saw in the show, and I'm just gonna throw that in there. There we go. And I left this off the ingredients list. I'm very sorry, guys. This is my bad. A lime, a squeeze of lime in your salsa it makes all the difference in the freaking world. A nice squeeze of lime, and where I cut myself on that foil earlier is really coming back to haunt me right now. Really doing a job on me. Ooh, yeah. Wow, that feels pretty strong. Let's rinse that off. Okay. Now. Whew. Yeah, yeah, no, you, you guys said it. Yeah, give me more Bob Ross. I want more Bob Ross emotes, whatever they're called. Um, and uh, let's see here. We got uh, we got those in. So now it's time for cilantro and, and a uh, jalapeno pepper. That's what we're doing next. I'm going down into my cold storage here. Grabbing the cilantro. Grabbing the jalapenos. Yep. Boggle. Peggy, you, you're playing boggle? Anyway, so, <laughs> so when you're cutting peppers, any kind of pepper, even if it's like the most mildest pepper, like a... Uh, like a jalapeno, wear gloves, for God's sake. It, especially if you're a dude, like, you're gonna go to the bathroom later and you're gonna be like, what's going on downstairs right now? And you're gonna be like, why is this happening to me? Who did I piss off? What wrong person did I sleep with? And you're like, why is everything on fire? And, you're, and then you're gonna be like, oh, I touched a jalapeno and then touched my junk and, I, and that was a huge mistake on my part. So, get the gloves going, guys. Seriously. I got, I got a pack of a thousand of these for like, I don't know, 20 bucks? It's worth every penny. I haven't even burned through the first of five boxes yet in, the, in like four months. And it's so worth it. So, if you don't want it too spicy, we're pulling out the, the um, what is this called? The, the ribs? I don't know. The seeds and the, um... We're pulling out all this white stuff. Why can't I remember the name of this? I think it's the ribs of the pepper. This is where all the capsaicin lives. is in the seeds and in this white stuff in the center of the pepper. So we're pulling all that out. We don't want too much heat. Me, at least. I don't know how you, how you live, but what your day-to-day -day is like. You can do whatever you want. And then, very much same kind of principle. We're just going to make uh, some long slices in the pepper, like so, and then uh, use that rocking motion, get this out of here, use that rocking motion to finely mince the jalapeno, so not only do we, do we need heat, we need green, we need color in our salsa, the salsa should be colorful. But also we need the heat. There should be just a little bit of heat in salsa. I mean, you can be a total wimp and not have any, but like, there should be just a little bit, you know? All right, and also, because we're, you know, getting short on time here, I'm gonna uncover our, uh, our, our macaroni and cheese, maybe a little preemptively, because I wanna get a crisp top for us to look at before the live stream's over. There we go. I don't know if you can see that, but it's looking good already. Crank that up to 400, just to try and get a little bit more crust going. There we go. Chop the rest of this jalapeno.
we go. We got some Peno. That's looking good. I mean, already, tell me that's not looking pretty right now. Huh? I mean, come on. That's looking nice. Give me a break. Okay. Uh, next up, we need, we, so we have garlic in there. We need some cilantro if you're, you know, a masochist like me. You hate cilantro, but you're also a completist and you want to make sure that you're doing things correctly according to tradition. Now, with herbs, one of the great ways that you can chop up bunches of herbs like this is to grab a whole bunch and fold them into like a little packet. See, I'm sort of like rolling them on top of themselves. And then... And I run my knife through them. It's just much easier to chop them in small pieces and then I can run it the other way. And while I have chopped herbs. There you go. Run it through a few more times, make sure it's nicely finely minced. And there we go. We got some cilantro. Add in there. So we already have the lime, the cumin. What else is there? What else goes into salsa? Um, the other optional ingredients that I showed on the on the show were uh, red pepper and mango. I don't have those things right now, but those are things that you can add right now. Some finely minced mango, some some red pepper, some uh, chili powder. We can add some chili powder. See, these are just about like you know the flavors that make sense in this scenario. Like what would make sense with salsa or with Mexican food in general. Chili powder, like, it just works. And if I have any, we're gonna throw it in there. If not, you know what, okay. Oh, here we go, we got some chili powder. Little sprinkling of chili powder, just the littlest bit. There we go. And of course, we need to season with salt and pepper. This is a food, after all, that we're going to eat. It needs to be seasoned. Salt, pepper. Yep. How are we doing over there, Jess? Yeah. Mix that up. What would a cross section of salsa be? You're looking at it. <laughs> this is a cross section of salt. This is, many, this is the most cross sections at once ever shown on this show. It's about 50,000 cross sections at the same time. Very impressive. All right. And, uh,. Yeah, so now we'll just throw that in the bowl. I'm going to go ahead and clean my work surface again because it's going to become our plating arena. Clean this off. There we go. Always keep a clean work surface, both for plating and life in general. If you work in an office or in a kitchen, just keep a clean work surface, always. Why not? Um, vacuum sealer. Oh, sauce. Okay, I mean, freeze the sauce. Sauce freezes beautifully. And it's something you always make too much of. So, freeze the sauce. It's, it, it, it will freeze wonderfully. Now, another thing you can do with the salsa is throw it in a food processor or a blender. And give it a little blend just to make it smoother. I like a chunky salsa. I don't like smooth salsas. It reminds me of jarred salsas. So I like I like a really chunky salsa. And uh, of course, just you know, always find ways to, to garnish to make things look a little a little nicer. We just have a simple bowl of salsa here, but you know, throw that on there. And that's nice. This is not a great light leaf salsa. There we go. That's nice. Check out the mac and cheese. Let's give it five more minutes. In the meantime, we can have a little salsa. We can also check on our red sauce, which at this point has been going for still less than an hour, but it's probably in a relatively good place to at least start considering eating. I'm learning to like cilantro, boys. I don't think it's ever going to actually happen, but I'm trying. Hmm. So now, let's move this out the way. Get this out of here. 
put down some hot plates because we're going to start plating stuff up. Here we go. So we have our salsa. Let's put this all the way on this end of the, ta the table. We're going to have our mac and cheese. We're going to have our red sauce right here, here, and here. Would you ever put olive oil in salsa? Absolutely. Yeah, that seems like a good idea, actually. Um, why not? There you go. Can only help, honestly. Um, let's take a look at our red sauce, which has been going for about an hour now. So I would honestly recommend letting it go a good deal longer, uh, two hours to four hours, but at least one hour. And whenever you're done, whenever you're done, you know, cooking, that's when you season. At this point, if I'm done cooking right now, this is when I season my taste. And I season because as it's cooking, it's reducing. We're losing moisture, we're losing volume. So if you seasoned at the beginning, it would be way too salty at the end. I'm gonna hit it with a lot of salt, freshly ground pepper. And go for the kosher salt, go for the freshly ground pepper. I swear to God, it makes a real difference. Like, not only in the way your food tastes, like fre freshly ground pepper just is a world of difference, but also the kosher salt lets you feel how much you're seasoning your food. And I hope that's something you guys are taking away tonight, is feeling the what food needs and, and where it needs to go. And feeling how much your food is seasoned is very, very, very important. Yeah, see this is ready to go into like a lasagna or pizza, something where you need a brighter, you know, more, uh, a, fr a fresher tasting sauce, not a slow simmered, you know, uh, a deeply caramelized sauce. And another way you can cook this, by the way, is in the oven. You put this in a 300 degree, degree oven with, a, with a, a lid slightly ajar like this for four hours and you're going to have the most beautiful slow cooked sauce ever made. But this right here, it's still ready for action. This can do some stuff. Alright, the mac and cheese almost done. And while that's browning up, meatballs? I don't have any meatballs. Hayden, I get it. I understand. You have years of experience. We saw you before. Congratulations. Get out of here, Hayden. Wild specs? What does that mean? Oh, these specs? Does that mean my glasses? Let's see if I can steam them up in the sauce here. Hang on. They'll go like this. Eh, I know, it didn't work. <laughs> I'm so saucy. You're absolutely right. Drink more booze. If you insist, I have my second drink right here. I really recommend, if, as long as you guys don't have a problem and as, and as long as you're of age, having a drink when you're cooking, it really loosens you up and just sort of makes things a little bit easier. Uh, uh, if you're having a dinner party, have a glass of wine. Again, if you're of age and if you do not have a problem, that is when you do that. So please. Uh, if Jess needs to be fed. Jess, do you want some, some, some chips? Sure, I'll have chips. <laughs> chips and sauce? I mean, homemade chips are not worth the effort, if you ask me. Uh, I've made them before. You're, you're deep frying corn or flour tortillas. And, um. That's pretty good. It's a little salsa. Except I like cilantro. And it's full of cilantro. Like everybody else. You like cilantro? Yeah. Good for you. It's really sad for you that, that you don't have that yeah, part of the world. Well, <laughs> I make, I make do. I, I get by. Mm -hmm. And, uh. You know, I feel like I'm a better person for it, honestly. I feel like a bigger person. No. Well, maybe true because I'm shorter than you, so. I was about to say I'm a physically bigger person. No. And that makes me a better person. I'm fine being short if it means I can eat cilantro. God damn it, she's got me beat. <laughs> I win. That's really good. <laughs> Alright. It looks like, you know, I'd love to, again, you know, we're running short on time here. We're going over, so... I love to let the mac and cheese go a little bit longer, but it is browning up, so I'm happy to take it out at this point. As soon as I find my second of glove. Don't day esta. These are the best chips ever, by the way, late July. I got these at Whole Foods. I'm not sponsored. 
late July uh, chips are so fucking good. I don't know why. They are. Um, okay, here we go. Second of glove. There we go. I'm going to kill the oven, something that lots of stoners forget to do. There we go. There we go. And we got some mac and cheese, ladies and gentlemen. That is some class A mac and cheese. Could use some more browning, but we are we are trying to finish finish things up tonight. So I'm gonna grab a plate, serving spoon. And I'm going to dig in. Oh, that corner piece is really where it's at. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, 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 oh that corner piece. Where everything gets all browned. It's got like yellowish, brownish stuff that gets right there. Goodness gracious. Oh. Whoops. Oh. I mean, come on. That's that's so good. It's really hot because it just came out of a 400 degree oven. Oh, it's oh, woo hoo! It's really hot. You know when it hits you in the back of your throat. Hmm. Jess, you want to try this one? <laughs> it's really very good. It's very hot. I think it trusts me. But and I know you said you like the corner, so I'm gonna get you this yes. corner right here. See that right there? Yeah, that's that's, that's stuff really right where it's at. That's it. Yeah. Four. That's amazing. It's super hot. What kind of pasta with mac and cheese? This is raditore with the uh, with the uh, uh, cheddar and parmesan and gria. Oh my god, way better than shells. It's you're right. I mean, I, I love shells, so I can't shit on shells. But raditore, there's so many crevices and little little craggles mm -hmm. that we can get into. A lot of crunch. Oh my god. No, there's no chicken. No, it's not, who said chicken? Stop mm -hmm. it. Time to eat my pop tarts. What Get about those bacon? Bro. Oh yeah, no, I, I, throwing bacon in this would ruin it. I'm kidding. It'd be delicious. I no, see, yeah, that burn when when the really good <laughs> stuff hits you, right there. It's it's a mistake. Yeah. Oh my I god. I made the same mistake. I'm gonna put that down. <laughs> well, Damn, that's so good. <laughs> so we got, and it, you you you're here as my sauce moderator. It burned so, all of my insides. Do you want to try my sauce to make sure that I didn't mess it up? Now, granted, this has only been simmered for less mm -hmm. than an hour, so just go off that and think of it as more like a pizza sauce or a lasagna sauce, something that's going to be twice cooked, essentially. Yeah, that's good. Sweet, fresh, mm -hmm. light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But three hours later, this would make a really oh, good, yeah. complex, deep sauce. That's well, good. Well, Jess, thank you so much for... Uh, Damn. For, for looking things over for me and for, for, for weeding through the insanity that was this comment section. <clears throat> it's not awful. <laughs> and I'm going to eat one more bite of that's this. That's the corner piece right there. Yeah, I see it. Cooled off, hopefully, to the point. Mm, I, don't, I don't even care. Just Zoe de Chanel? <laughs> <laughs> well. I have to eat this off camera because my mouth is so full. <laughs> Well, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the first live stream of Basics with Babish. I hope you either tried along with me or you learned a thing or two or you had a laugh or you had a drink or something. Uh, this was a lot of fun for me. It was really nice to meet all of you and you know, talk with all of you in person and see all these emotes and, 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 uh, and, and talk times and, and, and hearts and oh, this, uh, all these tags. And uh, I really look forward to the next time we're going to do this. Next time... We're going to be taking a look at steak. Basics with Babish episode 2 is all about ribeye and skirt steak. And then we're going to be making it live on the show. So, down here from me, bye. Thank you. And uh, we'll, see you guys, we'll see you guys on the show next week and live the week after that. Uh, let's get down to basics. <laughs>